Before we answer this question, let's just see what is the role of this inductor which is placed over here in the circuit. See the inductance L is given by, the self inductance is given by mu naught n square A L where mu naught is the permeability of the medium, n is the number of turns per unit length, A is the area of cross section and L is the length of this inductor. In this case, since an iron core is placed, we have to replace mu naught with mu r times mu naught, where mu r is the relative permeability of the medium. See, iron has an extremely high relative permeability. It's about 1000 times more than air. So, we have a self-inductor, sorry, we have an inductor over here which has a fairly large self-inductance. Now let's answer the first part of the question. When the switch is closed and a current flows in the circuit, the current is going to grow from 0 to a maximum value. This growing current or chain current will produce an induced EMF which is given by minus L di by dt which means that as long as the current is changing you have an induced EMF and you can see the negative sign so this is a back EMF and it opposes the cause which produces it produces it which in this case is the DC battery. So the bulb will not glow brightly in the first instance it will take some time for it to glow. So the brightness will increase gradually. Now once the current has attained its maximum value then di by dt becomes zero which means the induced EMF is zero or the back EMF or the opposing EMF is zero and then the brightness of the bulb will remain constant. So for a very short interval of time while the current grows from zero to its maximum value, the brightness of the bulb will also increase gradually. Now let's answer second part of the question. When the AC source replaces the DC source, then the brightness of the bulb decreases. Now when we are talking of the brightness, of the bulb when it is connected to the DC source, we are talking of that stage when the current has reached its maximum value and the bulb is glowing brightly. On connecting it to an AC source, the inductor will offer an inductive reactance given by omega L. Due to this, the current in the circuit will decrease. As the impedance in the circuit has increased, the current will decrease and the brightness of the bulb will decrease. Now here is a small question for you. How does the brightness of the bulb change if a capacitor of reactance, you have a capacitor of reactance Xc equal to XL is included in series in the circuit. So you have an inductor and you have a capacitor now and this is a bulb and this is an AC source. So this is in continuation with the second part of the question. In this question, we need to show that the average velocity of the free electrons in the presence of an electric field is constant. So we need to show that the average velocity of free electrons is constant. Now, in a metal, the free electrons have a very random motion. Say the path of an electron can is shown like this. Now, if an electric field is applied, say an electric field is applied in this direction, then the force on the electrons would be in the opposite direction since the electrons have a 
negative charge. So now if we are going to draw the path of the same electron, it will have drifted a little towards the right. So say when it reaches this point, instead of this point, it's moved up a little, a little to this side and a little to this side. So now the path of the electron can be shown like this. Though it is still as random as it was earlier, it's just that it's a little drifted towards the right. Now, this drift velocity is given by E, E over M times tau. And how do we get this? The force is Q times E and the force is mass into acceleration. So the acceleration of the electrons in the presence of an electric field would be E, E over M and their average velocity would be acceleration times tau, the relaxation time for which this force acts. The relaxation time is the time between two successive collisions. So now the velocity of an electron can be written as we have a random component which doesn't change even if an electric field is applied and we have a component which is the drift velocity due to the electric field. See this is something like suppose you're in a room full of people, you're standing here and your friend waves out to you at the other end of the room. Now you're trying to move up to your friend and say the room is full of people. The loads and loads and loads and loads of people. Now as you keep moving forward, you keep getting knocked by people. But still there is a sense of direction because in spite of that random motion, you will be moving towards the right. So similarly, electrons move in a particular direction which is determined by the electric field but their motion is still random due to frequent collisions. Now, this is for, if you write this expression of the velocity, this would be for one electron. So I can just write this as this subscript i, say the ith electron. Now, taking an average of this, the average velocity would be If you noticed, we put the average of the random velocity as zero. The component which is in all possible directions, an average of that velocity would be zero. So the average velocity, which is the drift velocity, is given by E E over M times tau. And as you can see, this is constant and it doesn't change as long as temperature doesn't change because if temperature changes then the relaxation time will change. If the temperature increases the relaxation time will become shorter. In the diamagnetic material the net dipole moment mu is equal to zero whereas in a paramagnetic material the net dipole moment is not equal to zero. The atoms have a small dipole moment which as they are randomly oriented they cancel each other out in the absence of an external field. Let's now answer the second part of the question. It says that elements with even atomic number are more likely to be diamagnetic. See electrons could be going around the nucleus either in the clockwise direction or the anti-clockwise direction. So both directions are possible. That means you would have some upward dipole moments and some downward dipole moments. If the number of upward dipole moments are equal to the number of downward dipole moments, then the net dipole moment will be zero. So it is more likely if there are even number of electrons that the net upward dipole moment equals the net downward dipole moment making the material diamagnetic.